Hello everyone, Mr. John here from Air Team Institute with this week's Thursday tidbit where we are talking about points in the World Cup group stage. So, might not mean anything to us right away, so let's talk about the inspiration here a little bit. The group stage is the first portion of the soccer or football World Cup, depending on how you want to talk about it there. This year's World Cup held every four years. This year's is in Qatar. And that group stage is groups of four teams. So right now there are 32 teams in the World Cup. They're divided into these eight groups of four teams. Each team plays the other teams in their group one time. So they each play each other in their group and the top two teams advance out of each group. Now, this is a little bit vague right now. We're going to talk about the points they actually get for the games in a second. The top two teams in terms of points advance, there's tiebreakers, all kinds of complicated things there. We're not going to get into in this video, but if you want to look that up, they are a little bit interesting that way as well. But for our purposes, the top two teams advance and we're more worried about these points and how they earn them and what goes on that way as well. So first warm up question we want to deal with in this scenario. So how many games are played among teams in a group? So we had said just a little bit of review. We had said that there are four teams in a group there. So we have four teams per group and they play all of the other teams in their group once. So the four teams per group, right? They each play each other once. And there are, of course, multiple ways to think about this problem and how you could go about counting the scenarios there. So one way of doing this is if you're comfortable with combinations, you would say, oh, four teams per group, they each play each other once. We have four teams choose two of them that is each matchup there and this will give us a total of six outcomes we have in that scenario so per group six games are being played in total now where what is this formula if you haven't seen it before or really another way of thinking about this you might say there's four teams in total we said they each play the other three teams. So you might start by saying we have four times three is 12 there. Now the issue of that is, we'll talk about some of these setups later, but something like the US, right, playing against another team, such as England, right, that's the same as England playing the US. So those things we don't want to count twice because the order doesn't matter, so we can divide by two. This is actually exactly what the four choose two notation we have here as well means, and but that is what we have for the number of games in a group. Now, once we do this in a group, remember that we said that there are eight groups in total. So in total, right, there are eight times six equals 48 games in all there. So that's not really gonna be important for our questions later. We're gonna focus more on the groups themselves. You can expand it to all of the groups and the whole set of teams there but just wanted that as a good warm up of, there's no overcounting in that scenario. There's no overlap between the groups, so we're just doing eight times six. 
In contrast to when the teams were playing each other, we had this overlap, we had this overcounting, so we needed to divide by two. Okay, let's take a look then at our points. How do the points work in this group stage? So during the group stage, how do the teams earn the points? They get three points if they win the match. This is soccer, football, so there are ties. They don't break the ties. There's no penalty shootouts you might be aware of for World Cup matches. That happens later in the tournament. For now, if it ends in a tie, it's a draw. One point for each team. And there is no points given if you lose a game there. So... This brings us to a natural warm-up question two. And this is a little bit more complicated. And as a preview of what we're doing later, this is a good place to practice being organized. So we want to say, well, what are the possibilities for the total points a single team has at the end of a group stage? Now, if we're going to start listing these out, there's not... <clears throat> really a better way of doing this than carefully listing stuff out. You want to probably organize things in a nice way there. So, for example, at one end of the spectrum, the team wins all of their games. So, the order doesn't matter. So, we don't need to worry about, well, which games did they win, even if they only won one game. They get three points if it was the first game or the last game. That stuff we don't care about here. So if they have three wins, we get, of course, three plus three plus three. There is nine total points they would get there. That is the maximum they have in this scenario. And then at the other end of the spectrum, right, we have LLL. So that is 0 plus 0 plus 0, and so that is, of course, 0 points. So if you're just getting started for a problem like this, it's helpful to do those extreme cases. What's the biggest total? What's the smallest total? And then we can start worrying about things in between there. Now. I'm going to maybe do this a little bit differently in terms of my organization there. So if we think about other, other possibilities then in this case, you might start thinking about what happens if you have two wins. So we could have two wins and then you could have a draw. Again, I don't care about the order here. So let me just list the two wins first. So you could have two wins and a loss. And so in this scenario, well, we have our three plus three for the win. A draw is worth one point. A loss is worth zero points. So these are possibilities there. And so in this case, we see a score of seven or six is possible as well. So in terms of the organization of this, right, we're kind of organizing it in terms of the wins and losses and draws maybe, then you could start thinking about the points and then that's giving us when we add them up the total number of things we have here. Now let's start thinking then, those are the cases where we had exactly two wins. Now, one win gets a little bit more complicated here. So, for example, we could have one win and two draws. And now we can maybe start seeing some patterns here, right? Well, if we have one win and two draws, this is going to be three plus one plus one. This is going to give us five points in total. And once you get to the smaller numbers, maybe you start noticing, well, it's kind of easy when we have threes and ones, and if we have zeros available, a loss is worth zero points, 
maybe at this point you start thinking, well, okay, what about some other values? Can I get four points? Well, sure, we could get four points with one win, right? One draw and a loss. So win, draw, loss, whatever order, again, doesn't matter there, right? This is going to give us four points here. And we could continue this that way, right? It's pretty easy to see for one point that is a draw and two losses. For two points, you could have two draws and a loss. And for three points, notice that all of these things are not necessarily unique, right? A win and two losses will give you three points. Three draws will give you three points. This is the first example we've seen, right? There could be more. Think about that. Try to prove it possible or not possible as an extra thing there, right? But we have all of these different possible values there listed at the bottom. And so everything from 0 to 9 is possible except for 8. So if we're summarizing things here, everything from 0 to 9 is good except 8. That's the only one missing in this setup there. Okay, so let's think about what question I have for you for the week. So question, does each group always end up with the same total of points? We look at each team individually. We said, okay, they could have somewhere between zero and nine, but not eight points. We look at all four teams, add them up. Do they always end up with the same total of points there? Now, you could think about this a little bit, thinking about games at a time. Since some of the groups are already ending, let's use the real world to help us here and say the answer is no. So we have two groups here as an example. So group A has already finished and we have a list of their points here on the right hand side. Side note, we do have other info here. That's how tiebreakers might work with the goal differential and things like that. We see in this chart as well, the top two teams advancing, things like that there. But we have these situations in this case. So group A, so if we look at group A here, they had seven, six, four, and zero. And so that was a total of 17 points for their group in all. And group B had seven, five, three, one. So a little bit different here. And these points added up to 16. So this is proof in a sense. We can prove something with an example. This example is done. We know their points. They had different amounts of points there as well. Now, I think you're probably able to see where this is going then. My question for you for the week then is considering these total points the sum for all of those teams in a group. So we had group A had 17 points, group B had 16 in total. What's the maximum? Is 17 the maximum or could you go higher than 17? What's the minimum? Could a group's total be lower than 16? What other totals are possible? So again, list out the possibilities here. And be a little bit careful. We've already listed it for single teams. A single team can have anywhere from zero to nine points. Does that mean all four teams in the group can all get nine points? No, because if a team has nine points, that means they won all of their games and it's impossible for all of the teams to win all of their games because they're playing each other. So there is an interesting interplay with the different groups this way because the teams are playing each other. 
So that's one question to consider. While you're at it, if you want the more challenging version, not only consider the total number of points that a team gets, but the actual values for each team. So in those same examples, group A had a sum of 17, which came from first team getting six, sorry, seven, six, four, and then zero. Group B was seven, five, three, one. So if we were looking at these results, top to bottom, what are the team's points totals? What ordered lists like this are possible? Could you have 7630, for example? We already explained a little bit, you can't have something like 9999, or you can't have something like 0000. zero, zero, zero. Which ones are possible? How many in total are there? That's a good challenge question to think about as well. We will revisit those questions next week talking about how you could approach them, sharing some ideas for solutions, things like that as well. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. Don't miss out. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Share any ideas you have for either these problems or problems you would like to see, topics you want to see talked about in the future. And most of all, thank you for watching, and I will see everyone next time. Goodbye.